Uh huh. Oh. Oh, good morning. Hi. <laughs> so before we start, welcome to the Sun Dragon Sideshow Disclaimer: The Adventures of Liz and Rebecca. Disclaimer: <laughs> We're not feeling super adventurous today. I can't take this off with my hat on. You have issues. I have issues today. I mean, we're <laughs> we have we have many issues. I'll put this back on. Um. <laughs> Yeah, we both got our boosters yesterday, <laughs> and so a little, little energy today, at the very least. It was a bright <laughs> idea to go on Monday because that's the only no, day we could. I knew it was gonna suck. I really, I knew it. I knew, but yeah, it was the only day we could. Yeah, I knew because because and then I started getting more reports. Well, I got some of these reports before we got the booster, but oh well um that most people and i went oh yeah that happened after the second shot too most people feel crummy the day after we can attest to that <laughs> we're feeling a little low energy a little little crummy not end of the world crummy feel much better than i did in the middle of the night but you know the day is young, <laughs> the day is young. <laughs> um this is not to um keep people from getting their boosters this this means it's working this means our immune system is, is getting ready so that when someone with COVID walks through the door who doesn't know they have COVID, even with a mask, we will hopefully not still not catch it. So go get your boosters when you can. Give yourself a day or two afterwards. Ours, okay, the, I know we still have to do introductions, but I'm, I'm, on, a, I'm on a tear here. <laughs> so not um, a thing. So not a thing. Um, like we planned as much as we could. We planned this with the original shot, the first shot and the booster. And we, we, were we did them on Fridays. On fr we were closed on Saturdays. So. Yeah, we, were, we weren't working on Saturdays. So like I shut, when I did my thing, I shut the shop down midday for my second shot and went and got it and went home and then crashed the next day and was in bed all the next day. And even if we got our shots on Friday, we're open on Saturday. Yeah, and we can't get them on Sunday. No. So not that I, that I know of. I don't think even the pharmacy at Ingalls is open on Sunday. That would have been perfect, but that's not the way my life works. And heaven forbid, I shut the shop down for a day because when I shut the shop down for, and this, we weren't even having real appointments then. For the storm. Well, we might've been doing appointments, but you know, we weren't, we were doing like walk up traffic and things like that. Like I shut the shop down for half a day and, and some people lost their minds back in April. I mean- I'm fully aware <laughs> the world will continue to function if I take a day off, but sometimes I don't feel that way. <laughs> we know that it continues to function. Some yes. of our customers don't understand that. Yes, they don't understand. Why wouldn't you just be there all the time? Anyway, okay, I digress. Or I've done my digression for- Five minutes. For 9.11 in the morning, 9.14. I think I get another one in about five minutes. <laughs> So who are okay. you? Hi, I'm, I'm Rebecca. I was I was getting there. That was on my mind too. I'm Rebecca. I'm the owner of Sun Dragon Art and Fiber in kind of cloudy and dismal and cold. And I don't even know what it's trying to do today. Brevard, North Carolina. I'm Liz. I'm the minion there. It is going to warm up to like 65. She's, she's the weather person. Five. Today is going to be our I'm last be hot. warm day. Tomorrow's going to be in the 50s. Thursday is going to be like 43 and rainy. I should probably get that space heater tomorrow on the way home. That's what I should do. <laughs> this, this is not doing extra things today. This is barely getting through today. <laughs> so if you want to see how we survive the day, come to midnight tonight, come to sit virtual sit and stitch. <laughs> and we will probably both just be like, I can't move. Someone's trying to come into the meeting. I can't move. I'm trying. Uh, yeah. Or actually, honestly, the way the, the second shot went by tonight, we could be back to our normal selves because like, I remember after my second shot, I distinctly remember like being in bed and not wanting to get out of bed and just lying there and finally dragging my butt out because someone had to make both 
he who shall not be named a nice soup. By the way, I think we broke up like a week later. It's like, what the hell? I mean, heck, excuse my language. But not going on to tear about that because I know what it'll do. That happened last week. Um, <laughs> I learned as oh, my therapist gonna be as my <laughs> therapist says I learned things I learned not to do that um so no but but honestly by dinner it was like I felt like I had the flu of sorts like a mild flu without the fever and by dinner I suddenly felt human again like yeah. I wasn't because when you feel sick like that usually it lasts for a few days when it's actual sickness but for me, the reaction to the the shot was, oh, ew, uh, uh. oh, I'm fine again. Okay, cool. Last night, like I experienced the whole like people talked about symptoms that they had where they felt like absolute crap for a few hours. Like <laughs> I woke up at twelve, at one, and at two, just every muscle in my body was screaming, and I laid there at two. And I was like, okay, if I shift positions, okay, that helps a little bit. And like, all of a sudden it was gone. Like gone. Yeah. yeah. I'm tired and sore, but you know, my not lower, like muscles screaming. My lower back is screaming right now. Um, my shoulder, like I went and raked the, uh, rake the driveway cause it needed it. And I figured that would move my shoulder cause you're supposed to, you know, move things so that maybe it won't go pfft. Um, uh, it still did that. In fact, I was feeling it in my shoulder blade by the time, just even at the start of, of raking. I think it probably helps it for today. It just feels sore and bruised and stuff. But, um, I felt a little dizzy last night. I felt, you know, the cat only attacked me once. He just, I was kind of like, I think I sense body language. Like he's going to attack me and I can't do anything. So he bit my armpit, you know, ran away. That's what he does. I forgot to share the story last week that I had them trim his nails at the vet and I shared this on knit night and like, and he tried to claw and jump on the back of the couch right near my head to get up behind me. And it didn't work because he didn't have real claws anymore. <laughs> and he kind of scrambles and boom, back on the ground. I mean, this was not a lot. This was not a big jump. This was only a couple of feet. And I look over and I'm like, it's okay. You can try again. He's looking at me like, what did you do to me? What, what happened? That doesn't, what? I think he was mystified and he didn't want to touch the couch for a while because <laughs> he thought the couch had hurt him basically. No, is evil. he bounced off my armpit and ran away. It didn't hurt that much last night. Um, I, I tried to like, my, my skin is sensitive, all that stuff when you feel sick, right? A little, just a little. I focus is hard but I don't think you will know. You guys will see that much <laughs> difference from a normal, a normal show, except yep. low energy, maybe. Right. Um, and I, towards the end of the night, I could roll over onto the shoulder that hurt. Like I was trying to avoid that, but then I, I was getting stuck in positions I didn't want to be sleeping in. So, um, but I, my, my phone gave me like eight, over 80% sleep efficiency. It gave me hundred percent sleep efficiency over the weekend. Like I've never right. hit that before. I don't know why. Maybe I was that tired. I think it's cause I went to bed super, super early. It mm -hmm. probably was Saturday night and like, didn't get out of bed. Saturday like Saturday we were kind of toast. Yeah. After toast. Yeah. Yeah. Cause we got up so early Saturday morning anyway. Um, so yeah. So, so see if we bounce back tonight or if we are beyond toast and just lying there, uh, you know, um, I have my coffee. I made a big coffee today cause I knew I'd need it. That's and I came in all dressed up cause I finished some stuff this weekend. It was great. Da -da. I get to show off. Um, I finished one mitten. I drove in today with one mitten. No, but considering I started this, the, the cast on for this, I think was Saturday's meditation. Yeah. Something like that. So yay. You will, one you will need them on Thursday. I'm trying. <laughs> so <much>. I'm trying. <laughs> Look, I drove in like this, which was kind of funny. Um, 
So this is the Lily Kate Makes Axis yarn. The Axis yarn is a worsted weight yarn. It's, I would say the Lily Kate is, I, I'm like, it's a thin worsted. It'll work for these mittens because these mittens are DK weight. And, and this is, and so I use the size six needles to tighten it up and make it warm. And, but it fluffs so much that like the three and a half inches for this, but, well, I followed the instructions and then it's three and a half inches. And the whole point is so, You've seen me, I'm making these for all my family. Not out of this ridiculously soft yarn. I'm sorry, family. But this will not survive the washing machine. So um, hold it down, it's perfect. Up, it's supposed to be, you can put it up and then it's almost like having a mitten. I mean, you're, you're not sewn up here, but I drove in with it up because it was a little chilly and it was really floppy. It was like extra, like wee. <laughs> but it still works. And this was fun as always, all the drop stitches and everything. This is so unbelievably soft and um, I don't have the right thing open because I'm not doing this in the order I thought I would. Shocker. Um, hang on, <laughs> hang on, I'm going for it. You have the scale over there anywhere, Liz? No, the scale disappeared, didn't it? No, well. Never mind. Oh, wait. Um, excuse my snorting. This is just me in life. Um, because this is how much I had left. I because it's gonna take because this floppy thing means well over half a 50 gram skein for a glove. Um, I'm making two different colors because let's test this. I have 17 grams left of this, which means two pinks. I might have a full 20, I'll have, I'll have like a good over 30 grams left of a hundred grams after I make two. But I thought, what fun could it be? I think we might have discussed this last week. If I make, this looks two like, you know, this, this looks like a scarecrow or something from Halloween. If I do two different colors. So I have started, let me take these guys out so you can see. I've started the second one. This, this is Love Note. And I want to say this is Dark Matter. Yes. colorway it's the dark gray and i actually i started this one and the instructions when you're making it goes right into the right mitten and i was halfway through the thumb increases and i went i wanted to wear this on my left hand is it really where's my i don't care bar on that right and i thought about it i'm left-handed by the way i thought about it and thought about it and i went no i really want the pink one on my left hand so I ripped it back down to here. And because the only difference with left and right is where you put the thumb, it's offset a little bit. So on your right one, you start it right after the back stitching. And on the left one, you start it right at the, like just before the end of the row. And my, I don't care bar was pretty high on this one. So I ripped it out and I remade it and I have one mitten. It's so soft. My hand is so warm right now. It's just, this yarn is amazing. I'm a big fan of this yarn, which <laughs> this was supposed to assuage my yearning to make a sweater out of this. Let me guess. It's so soft. I really want to make a sweater out of this. <laughs> I'm going to try to finish one sweater before I start a sweater you out of what? what? When you go on Christmas vacation. Trying to focus on you. What? <laughs> when you go on Christmas vacation. <gasps> will you let me start it on Christmas I will let vacation? You start it on Christmas Yay! vacation. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> I don't need your permission, but I'll take it. <laughs> um, I'm still debating the color scheme because, you know, I don't necessarily listen to the advice we get from, from you all out there, but you can make me triple second guess things so um so one um shelby rose shout out to shelby rose she said the one i'm making i was thinking about making with some of these neutrals and the pink she said it might look too much like my striped sweater i i don't know if i agree i mean there will be some gray in it that's true but this is different than the maroon but it has me second and and third guessing things so i have time until christmas though to make up my mind we'll see right now it would match my mittens which could be a good or bad thing But I, I just realized I'm binding this off on the wrong row. I should have done one more row, but 
I don't care. I've come too far. That's what you get for doing work while we're filming because I wouldn't be able to keep track. And right now, today, oh, that's multitasking is not a good idea. But um, okay, so this I could probably finish this during knit night tonight. Although the way my brain is working today, maybe not. The other thing I'm wearing today, it that I finished this weekend, is um, shout out to Shilpa names are just not working for me today. Shout out to Shilpa. Shilpa. She uh, pointed out that the garter snake hat, which I am wearing, which I finished, it's listed as being fingering weight, but it also has a DK weight version. Um, I, I don't know if you can list two weights on a Ravelry listing. So I'm going to, and I did it out of, wait, wait, I got it. Uh, achy. It's really hard to reach for things right now. Um, two colors of DK. I decided my Bear Chasing by Daydream Dye Works because it's my favorite and I've worked with it in fingering but not in worsted. And we looked through a bunch of different um, fiber space colors and really the best contrast, it wasn't necessarily going to be a bright contrast, was going to be the burnished from fiber space. Really, really pretty. Um, and this, let's see. I mean, you can get two hats at least out of this pattern, which is great. I still have 65 grams of this, of the bear chasing, which did the brim. I think if I did this again, I might make the brim a little longer. I just followed the pattern. I just, I did not check my gauge. I'm bad when it comes to hats and mittens about checking gauge, but that can be why something won't fit. This is pretty, this is pretty loose, but it still works, especially because I got my massive bun of hair. I have so much hair. You wouldn't know it because I pile it up. I have so much hair. Um, the contrast color that's not used in the brim. I have 85 grams. I only use 15 grams of this for this hat. We, we uh, you know, I keep saying, we'll make kits of this and that and this and that. And, and then we don't have time. And it's not that we're over busy. We are busy. We're just busy enough. It's also that we're trying not to overtax ourselves. So if you would like a kit, let us know, but we're not gonna be doing kits where we break up balls of yarn. Uh, we will sell you whole skeins of yarn. We'll find you a good color combo of some DK weight and know that you can get at least two hats if you want matching or you can flip the colors if you want to, all that stuff. But here's, here's the magic of the garter snake hat, which was really fun to do. I have it, I have it with the beginning of round in the back. And that means that the, the garter, like the, the, the brioche <laughs> is at its widest here at the bottom. And it goes up to a point kind of up here. And if you look at the side of my hat, you see oh. how it, it grows. Like, like there's only a little bit of garter back here and every row, the garter grows and the brioche shrinks. And so you end up with a, you know, I can go like this. Oh, that hurts. <laughs> I'm trying to keep I it in see. camera. So but, like, oh, it hurts. Yeah, I'll take yeah, it off. Okay. I'll show you. Yeah. Did you see? I saw. I saw. Oh, it's fun. Okay. So, and and again, the big huge bun in the back of my head throws it off. But if I hold it up like this, and again, the colors we picked are not gonna necessarily pop on camera, but the gold is is growing. And the brioche, if you go from the back, the brioche grows up to here. Here's the high point. And then goes down again, and it's pretty much as soon as you're you've you've finished the brioche, you start doing the decreases for the top of the hat. So That's and cool. isn't it cool? And if you did it out of fingering weight, you'd have more of this briocheness going on because the stitches would be smaller. And the other thing is, for the most part, I do believe it's, it's reversible. Oh, cool! How fun is that? Like. Like I haven't, I've sewed my ends in, but I haven't clipped them, right? And I haven't sewn these ends in. So the only part that's not reversible is whatever color you choose for your brim. So there's two ways I could wear this because sewing it in, you might see what I've sewn in if I turn this inside out. But the that's the only thing, if you do it in reverse, the brim color changes, but you still have a reversible hat in theory, if you use the same colors, right? Um, so here is like the multicolor is the prominent knit stitch and the gold is kind of recessed in it. If you flip it inside out, 
the gold is going to be the prominent knit color and the multicolor is um is yes it is <laughs> i was get the word was there it takes me a second even normally but yes thank you liz you're welcome what I so do. there you go it's a different hat but not so uh it's, it's what you do um i'm checking the yeah it got off zero so there could have even been more like no yes there could be even more yarn i can't my head's not doing math right now um and then other things i'm wearing today this i finished a long time ago but this is the, the vintersol by jennifer steingast that i really only finished because we had a pandemic because it was sitting on needles i was in sleep on sleeve island with this thing for like years ever yeah and um it's got a really wide neck but i'm starting to adjust to sweaters with wide necks like so you see my t-shirt oh well you're going to see my t-shirt because i'm not going to wear nothing underneath it so uh, and then i have layering but then you also the other thing you can do with wide necks especially in the winter is you can cover them with cowls yes. and this is um the yarn of the week the the product one of the products of the week this is a, this is actually a yarn but look when you knit with it you can't tell this is the for real you should today's the last day you can save 15 percent. it's inexpensive enough one cowl makes this awesome thing i made it for like all my family one christmas as just a lovely floofy warm thing to wear so liz because I have other things I could talk about, but we shouldn't neglect Liz because she's doing something awesome I, over here I, that she apparently was, bound off on the wrong side. What? Well, I bound it off on the wrong side. I was one where I was short, I think that will but I don't care. Did um, you bind off in pattern? No. No? No. Nope. Well, that might make a difference, but who? But if it, if you don't no, care, then who just, cares? It, it's fine. But because I didn't cast on in pattern, so I don't think it matters. Um, we have different ideas about that, but it's her sweater. I don't care. And whatever she does, if she's happy with it, we're good. I worked yes. on a papillon. Well, I worked on Mary's papillon. But you still got all this, this stuff done on your I, sweater. But yes, yeah. papillon. Let's talk I papillon. got the Pokemon ball with the eye put in. Uh-huh. So sweet. Now I am done with all the little outside and inside things, and I can just I need to get back to my papillon. Finish that. Um I was going to continue working on it on Monday, but then I kept looking at the forecast for this week going, it's going to be cold. I'm going to need a sweater. And I'm working on a sweater on 19 needles. So that's, you know, going to be fast. You started so. this on Saturday, didn't you? Friday night. Friday. I started. So that's the back. Oh, it's going to be super short, crappy, huh? Short, crappy, cable on the back. You should leave it all fringy just uh, there's for gonna a be fashion sleeves. statement. Yeah, you can still leave fringe showing. No, because the fringe on the other side is in it. Uh, uh, no. It's asymmetrical, Liz. Go with it. It's, yep. Start a trend. Yeah. And <laughs> it's supposed to be done all in one color. And I had all these colors of um, Marisol Ushia that I wanted to do a sweater. And I like that the stripes. It's all garter. I like that the stripes are not matchy matchy side to side. Yeah, I didn't want them matchy matchy side to side. I was going to stripe the sleeves and I might stripe the sleeves. I don't know, but I really don't want to. I don't know. It it takes a lot of ends you can, to weave in. You can I carry stripe. the yarns down, but then you'll, you might have a thick ridge. It's under here. If it's you carry not. All of them. It's not because like the next one will be used like the next time yellow would be used to be way down there and stuff. So yeah, that's with that with ultra thick. It's kind of hard. It's kind of hard. So I'm thinking about doing just the sleeves, the sleeves, you pick up stitches. And actually, I was looking over the pattern. And it's like pick up 15 stitches every other um, stitch on the both sides. So the sleeves are actually as wide as, as wide the, the garter. And, and then and you then just sew up the the ribbing. Do they do? Are they like balloon sleeves, or do they taper really fast? No, or they're just straight. And then you uh, knit one purl one you ribbing. Do <laughs> <laughs> you do ribbing to to, and I have a, a smaller needle that I'll probably okay. do ribbing. That's so. going to be super cute. But what is this pattern called again? This is the hold on. 
I have to find the pattern name because because we're having I, issues today. Why would I have it readily available? Because we're filming. Gosh darn it! Ah, <laughs> oh. here it is. It is the crop fisherman cardigan in merino number five. Say that again because I missed it. The cropped fisherman cardigan in merino number five by Loopy Mango. She will um, send that to me or I'll look it up and I will put it in the description. It's all in Zarger. It is so cool, except for the, the back. The back is cabled. The back is cabled. And that's awesome. Yeah. And as much as I hate purling, there really wasn't that much purling. Like there is, but there isn't. And the, why you if you make this hat you would have some issues or you'd have to figure out how to do it because garter when you're knitting flat like you're doing is knitting every row this is in the round so in order like this on the right side the multicolor did the knit rows which means it knit in here and the burnish did the pearl rows of the brioche which also meant when it was doing garter it was purling because when you're doing garter in the round you need to knit a row and purl a row for it to work. Is that another issue you're having with the sleeves? Um, the sleeves are meant to be done in the round. Um, if I do them in the round, I will do a German short row and go around the top instead of purling. And you were thinking about maybe doing them flat and sewing them. And I the... could do them flat and sew them up. I haven't decided yet. Well, if I do them flat, I could do two at a time. In theory, you could do that within the round two. It's just more complicated. Yeah, but the, it's the going back around the top that I don't want to pearl that much. Um, sewing them up. I'm thinking about this because she was asking me this yesterday. My brain is going slowly today. Sewing them up, you you can potentially just hit the pearl bumps and weevil. Weevil, that's not the right word, but that's the word I'm, wearing, I'm using right now. Wiggle back and forth. Um, and... It actually is a pretty flat seam if you're using your pearl bumps on the edges. Like she's not actually purling, but the bumps on the edges, I call them pearl bumps. They're the backside of knit stitches. They, they look you like know, even though you haven't purled anything in garter, you still have what I call pearl bumps. Yeah. So, um, because pearl bumps I would do are them the flat. backward side of, yeah, they're the backside of knit stitches. Yeah. I, I think I will do them flat just because then I can. And we can experiment or, you know, you don't need my help, but we could experiment with how to sew them up too. Like, I really do think going, cause then it, you don't even have to go like in the same hole. Yeah. That kind of seeming, it's just catch the pearl bump, catch the pearl bump, catch and, and everything's bottom to top, everything's the same direction. And when you pull it, you get, um, it should just, they should interlock like a zipper kind of thing. Yeah. It should look pretty actually. And it's your underarm. It's your underside Nobody's of your arm. Gonna, yeah. It's what was it? One of our knitters came in last week and she said that there's an Arnie and Carlos video that was like, it's not like you're going to walk around like this and they're going to see it. And even if they do, you can say, I wanted to say bad words. We're trying to keep this family friendly. Um, when I'm in a bad mood, bad words are up here. And it's just like, I made this. You didn't go away. I'm proud of the work I did. Would you like to do it next time? And if it's a, a, a knitter who claims to have and might have more experience than you, then they might like be a little snarky back and that's okay. Then they can do it for themselves how they want to do it. So it, every piece is a custom piece. So it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. It's what you did. There is how no you governing body. And this is one of the reasons that, <coughs> excuse me, this is one of the reasons I don't submit my work to state fairs and other things. And I don't really feel like someone else has the right to judge what I do. I, I mean, people will, might come into the store and think that my work is wonderful or think it needs, it, you know, it could have gone better. And that's part, what part of knitting is, is, is it comes out how it comes out. And if someone walked in here and said, oh, I could have done better than that. Here's the yarn. We'd love to sell you some and then you Knock can show us. Knock yourself out. <laughs> it's not about perfection. I think I have a whole life lesson on that. And if I don't, I should make one. It's not about perfection. It's about just, it's about the journey, not the goal. But then you have something really cool to wear, hopefully, when you're done. Yeah. So, you know, it's the thought that counts. So how many more adages can I throw out here? <laughs> you know? Um, yeah. 
when you're giving it to to someone else and if they notice it's not perfect we were thinking of you and we spent hours making something for you so yeah yeah um okay so other stuff let me see oh oh i don't think i showed this off um things are stuck together not so bad. so um i'm trying to remember her name hang on and see i didn't give her enough information she can't finish my sentence actually <laughs> my brain just like died and uh, i don't care that's us today <laughs> um lisa han i think she's Ma maliha designs i always get the l's and the h's um flipped when i look for her on instagram so i can never find her on instagram um she published a new pattern and it, it's ribbing it's wide ribs and cables. And I was like, oh, cables, yay. Fine. And it was written for, and, and again, we this was, I forget what day last week, but we were left our own devices because it was rainy. And Thursday, Wednesday and Thursday. Yeah, it could have been Friday. No, I think I think by Friday I had this started. Um, it, it was kind of rainy. And at least at the beginning part of the day, we were left our own devices and then it got crazy. And when we are left to our, what are you doing? I'm looking for a needle. Sewing needle? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> when, when uh, I, it's, it's organized chaos. I almost know where things are. When uh, we were left to our own devices and I saw this pattern, I went, ooh. And it's written for a solid or a tonal DK. And it would look lovely in fiber space, but I'm working with a lot of fiber space in my ongoing projects right now. And then Liz said, what about feeder book? And what about this like fire engine, crazy bold color of feeder book, which we happen to have just enough skeins for me to make this shawl. Um, the shawl is called the Rosa Canina. And again, three skeins of any DK weight yarn would be lovely. Um, I am doing the whole, the same thing I did with the night shift, which was made out of feeder book of being like, well, I'm not sure if it's going to go. Okay, but I'm going to trust it. So this is the yarn it's feeder book entropy DK. And I believe it's called flashpoint. And hang yes. on, I've got, oh, oh, back hurts. Ah. So here's an example. And this skein and the next skein of the three skeins I have picked out for it look almost nothing alike except that there's a little bit of orangey yellow in it but so they could be different batches because sometimes different batches from lisa at feeder brook come just completely different looking but with reminiscent tones of previous batches and that's the joy of a handmade yarn um these two look very similar even if they look different once i've wound them up so um lots of ums today this is life here is, I picked to start, like the inside and the outside both had the really fiery yellow. And so it started with the fiery yellow and you're, as it's growing, you have these, it's knit for pearl two ribs. This should block out gorgeously. And then the cables, which when the cable started, it was part of the barber pole, like spliced together yarn where you have two very different colors circling around each other. And I was like, oh, it's going to look weird. But then it kind of evened out a little bit towards the end. So you can see, I can see the cables on camera. Um, and I love my cables, you know. So this is how far I almost did this for morning meditation this morning, but I did my mitten instead because I'm trying to finish my mittens before it gets really cold. But the, the pattern is for the ribbing and a little bit of cabling and then a lot of ribbing as it grows and a little bit of cabling and a little more ribbing and then tons of cables at the other end. So I will put a link in the description, but Rosa Canina by um, Lisa Han. And she does really, it really pretty. It looks so cool. Yeah. It's, it, your and cables it's gonna are gonna again. get bigger and lacier or just? No, it's the same. It's actually the same chart for all the cables um well yes and no because the next time the cables happen they will i think do exactly what this did mm -hmm. which is a little like they the the ribbing kind of branched out and crisscrossed twice and then branched out again um so the next time the cables happen they will do that again i think i think only just as wide as this is and then the third time they happen the cables keep going so they they repeat this a bunch 
and it's really pretty. I don't have the, the pattern in front of me to hold up, but um, definitely check her pattern out on Ravelry if you like cables. This like gives you, as it grows, it gives you hints of cables to practice them. And then once it's really wide, you're doing a lot, a lot of cables. It's, um, she charts and writes out her patterns. However, the way she had to write the cable repeat, it, it wasn't on the chart. The, like when you see cables on a chart, it usually has a box around it or let me back that up. When you see a repeat of a pattern on a chart, it usually has a red box around it. And if that's, if it's a uniform box, then you can just throw stitch markers at the beginning and end of each repeat and use them to help you count. Mm -hmm. Cables, these cables have to crisscross out of that red box boundary. Oh. So the box goes like this and then it shifts over one to compensate for the cable that's gonna move, that needs to grab stitches from outside of this, like whatever number of stitches repeat. I can't remember off the top of my head because my brain's not working today. And then it shifts back. So it's, it doesn't necessarily lend itself to putting in stitch markers unless you're ready and willing to move them when told to, or when the box indicates you should. Um, it does kind of make sense though, because it's like, there's a cable, like it fits in the ribbing. There's a cable in the ribbing and then there's some ribbing that happens solo and then a cable and, and the cables should look when you do them properly in either a chart. I haven't checked out the written directions to see if I'm sure there's like, do this asterisk, repeat to asterisk so many times. Um, but I've seen a lot of written instructions where in order for the written instructions to not be a mile long, that asterisk repeat is not uniform on every row. It will work on every row, but it won't work if you put stitch markers in on the first row. Yeah. And then, yeah. So, um, yeah. So stitch markers may not be your friend on this pattern unless you recognize there's times when they're going to move to help you keep track of what's going on. Did you use stitch markers? I did not because of that, because I saw that it was going, and, and also it's not that big yet, so I could kind of keep track. But um, I, I thought about it and then I went, that's not gonna work because there's gonna be a cable right over a stitch marker on one of the rows, so. So I hope to keep working on that. There's a lot of things. There's so many things I want to keep working on. And I started like three new projects this weekend. So I finished one and a half of them. We were left but, and attended. Yeah. And, and new patterns came out and I went, Ooh. so, um, oh, oh, I wanted to mention to y'all because I forgot to put it in the newsletter and cause I was writing the newsletter after getting my COVID booster and <laughs> Um, and I forgot to mention all last week, we, we, or maybe I did mention last week, but I'm going to mention it again today. We got more of the Cocoa Knits makers boards in yes. and we got them in, in the color. Do you mind if I, nope. um, gently try not to knock too much stuff over. We got them in, in the color of Liz's, which you can't even really see. This is how slimline they are. Like she's got stuff attached to both sides of this with all of her magnets, which is wonderful. But if you can see the craft color, this color, mine's the gray. The gray went into stock and out of stock like immediately. We've got a bunch of this lovely craft, AKA brown color in the shop. And um, we shouldn't run out of those for a little while. And I just love how functional they are. And honestly, the craft color, like so much of what Coconuts makes right now is that brown, like the packaging. And the containers are that brown color. I, you didn't have to take stuff. And out well, show. I have I have stuff everywhere. I have stuff inside, outside, upside down. Which is the beauty of the makers boards of like they stay together and can show off things. And yeah, there's the color. Ta da! It's actually mm -hmm. the back because. But that's the front okay. Has my papillon pattern. But the front and the back and the side all everything have everything is. They all have the metal, the really slimline metal magnets. inserts. Yes. Yours stay together better than mine. When I open mine up, the magnets decide to it, pick up, to stick on a random side. It depends on how much, like I have a whole stack of paper mm -hmm. here. So, oh, so it kind of is a piece. barrier. Yeah. Yeah. So um, we have plenty of those in stock right now and they're wonderful. And if you use a lot of paper patterns like Liz does, it's a fantastic investment or a really good present for another knitter crocheter or some other kind of crafter in your life who needs to follow a pattern 
it could even work for following recipes in the kitchen. Yes. Technically, because all of the surfaces are supposed to be um, at least wipeable, if not washable. I don't know about chucking it in the washing machine, but there are ways that you can take out the metal and clean it, or you can just clean it. So um, if you know anyone who likes to follow recipes and patterns and things on paper, this is a great resource for them. It's, so. it's just fun. And all right. So I have lots. I need more magnets, I think, maybe. Because I brought this in, we're going to show it off again because I'm going to take it back home again. I, I started <coughs> and then we'll go over a schedule and, and close up and, and close this up and close and open for the day. Can't see. This is going to be a fun day. Um, we got more gray in for of the gray that I'm using for my Charlotte's universe. And it's a very, it's a noticeably different dye lot if you're holding the balls right next to each other. And I don't know if this will show up on camera, but I can hold them like this. Oh yeah. Like this is a more defined, the new, the new uh, dye lot of it has more definition to the yarn and the tweed is more tweedier. And it's a slightly different color, but I decided to take my chances with that. And I haven't taken out the blue I started to put in, but I'm, I will, because I have started the last side of this and I'm just gonna hold it up I can hold as it. best I can. Hang on. I'm hot. That's not a thing. <laughs> Ouch. Yeah, everything hurts, man. Or not everything, but oh, I have this backwards. Okay. If you want to take, although that's the side the yarn's on, so just be careful. Okay, there's enough excess yarn. All right. So I've started this with the gray, the top, and the side is the gray, and the other side is the gray. And the bottom, if I hold it up, I've still got some blue down there. I'm going to take that off. But this is huge. I know, especially when we hold it up and the weight pulls on it. But see, ta -da! I haven't really, I'm still on step, on step 12. There's 14. I'm still on step 12 because it's going to take forever. And I'm achy today. Even just holding that up is achy. So it's heavy. But, it's so heavy. <sighs> but I had to show it off to y'all um, so I can take home work on it. And I am hoping beyond all hope that maybe I'll have time to make progress on it and, and at least get to step 13 today. Cause like technically the crochet along was over like at least a month ago, but I'm still working on it. Which just goes to show everybody works at their own pace and gets things done at their own time. And that should be okay. It is. The more you know, that's my message for today. <laughs> okay. Um, we need to open up the shop soon. It's gonna take us some time because we're not moving very fast today. But tonight we already mentioned is virtual sit and stitch from seven to 9 p.m. Watch Liz and I be comatose on our respective couches and beds um, from the privacy of your own home. There'll be nothing super amazing going on from us. But if y'all wanna talk about things, come join us. It's on Zoom. Shop phone number. 828-877-3550. She's trying hard today. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then tomorrow is the most dangerous day of the week. And you can see if we have energy again and what we might decide to put on sale. Because I had I don't know what to put on sale. There are things I might have put on sale, but we sold out of them last week. So like the Ito. But no fun colors of Ito aren't back in oh, there. They're gone. So um, this is what happens when you wait for a sale, people. Stuff disappears. I don't know. Uh, so, so we will tell you thing, a couple of things at least that will be 15% off for the next week. It is a new month, by the way. It's November. That's fantastic. It's my birthday month. I don't really do anything for my birthday, but I might give you all a sale on my birthday. It's your birthday month. Oh, and what? just to start prepping everybody on Sunday morning. Oh, oh, yes. All the clocks fall yes, back. Yes, I was going to have us talk about that if not today sometime this week sure. but yes we should do it every day this week if you're not in the u.s and you're trying to join us for things 
if you don't do participate in daylight savings time, it's happening on Sunday. So we are falling back an hour. We're falling back. An hour. So if you're in a different time zone than us, especially in a different country than us and trying to join us for knit night and, and we're not there, that's why. Next week, not this week, next week. But we'll keep reminding y'all of that. Supposedly we get an extra hour of sleep if we take advantage of it and treat it as an extra hour of sleep. And, and we'll report back to you. It'll be goes. dark on our drive home. So we'll get home and be like, Oh, that's yucky. <laughs> that's yucky, but I'll survive. Okay. It was dark on our drive in on Saturday yes. and that was a bummer. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, third, f- f- Thursday. Thursday. <laughs> that's what I meant to say. Um, is dear Becky and Lizzie edition. If you want to send us a question to hear what we have to say about it, it'd be nice if it was related to knit or crochet. Cause otherwise we might not address it. Um, email. Liz at sundragonartandfiber.com. You can also write us a letter and you'll see if it gets to us this week, if not next week. If you want to write us a lovely letter or a card, it is Dear Becky and Lizzie, Sun Dragon Art and Fiber, 35 South Broad Street, Brevard, North Carolina, 28712. Friday is another knit night from 7 to 9 p.m. The next Sunday afternoon, sit and stitch on both Facebook and Zoom will be November 14th, which is four days after my birthday. So I think that's all we have for you today. Hopefully we are a little more with it tomorrow. (laughs) I think we did okay for feeling like poop today, but um, hopefully today's the only day we feel like poop. Although working through poop could mean we have residual effects tomorrow, but who knows? When are we not tired? very true this might have seemed like a normal episode to everybody (laughs) it did not feel like a normal one to us but y'all might be like what's the difference i don't know if we should be encouraged by that or not (laughs) (laughs) okay uh we we gotta go work but we will see y'all tomorrow and like and subscribe we're up to like 622 by the way which is pretty awesome like we didn't just stall out at 600 yay remember the next goal is 700 and then you get a slightly bigger sale, just a little bit. And um, you can also support us over on Patreon, patreon.com slash sundragon. Subscribing here doesn't cost you anything. Um, supporting us, becoming a patron, gets your name at the end and may not cost you that much per month if you choose to do it. So you do what is best for you. And we thank you for everything that you do for us. So bye. We'll talk to you later.